that, that we'd like to um, propose is called the simultaneous policy. This is something I've been working on for about um, for, for at least 15 years now, about 18 years in fact. And this is specifically aimed at the question of how do we reclaim the state from the clutches of global financial markets? How do we citizens get the state back in control so that we can impose the, the regulations that we've been kind of on, on things we've been talking about, whether it's technology, financial markets, climate change, etc. Oops. That's it. So my first suggestion is that global democracy, one person, one vote for everyone on the planet, is not likely to be a solution to global problems, at least not in the immediate future. Why? Firstly, it assumes the widespread acceptance of democracy on the Western style, but many nations, as we know, are not democratic and they're not likely to be anytime soon. It also assumes the widespread understanding of citizens of global issues. But as we've seen increasingly at the moment with Brexit and Trump, many citizens are, are far from having a, a world-centric global view. So the idea of global democracy, it might sound great, but it's not going to happen anytime soon. So democracy may be desirable at the global level, but it's not necessary. What is necessary now is agreement, global agreements. Now, when you think of global agreements, you're thinking of, the, for example, of the Paris Climate Change Agreement in 2015. But that agreement, to my mind, isn't going to work. Uh, and I'm sure many of you sense that already. So what's wrong with global agreements as we currently uh, have them? <clears throat> the first problem, and biggest problem, I would say, is that they typically deal with just one single issue at a time, like carbon emissions. But if you take almost any single issue, there will always be some nations that win and other nations that lose. And the losers, of course, have no incentive to cooperate. And essentially, that's why the United States has, has withdrawn from the Paris Agreement. The other problem is that these are, are usually agreements about targets, not about actions. Okay, we need agreements that really are about specific actions. <coughs> and finally, most importantly, governments have got no electoral incentive to engage or stick with these agreements. The citizens have no input into the, at the global level. So global agreements are really necessary, but they need a serious rethink, a serious redesign. To my mind, that successful global agreements would have three key attributes. The first would be that whatever policies are agreed are implemented simultaneously. That means by all or sufficient nations on the same date, even at the same time. Why? Because for many issues, uh, for example on corporation tax or financial market re-regulation, any nation that moves before others will suffer a competitive disadvantage. Capital will fly elsewhere. So we have to have simultaneous implementation. We also need multi, a multi-issue policy agenda. For the reason I said earlier, we need to have uh, policy packages that contain multiple issues. So, for example, you might have a currency transactions tax and a climate agreement as one package, because then the, the proceeds from the tax can be used to pay off the losers on the climate part of the agreement. Pretty much common sense. International Relations 101. Whoops, sorry. Uh, and finally, a way for citizens to make cooperation in the electoral interests of politicians. This is key. So how can we do that? One possibility is, is the simultaneous policy campaign. Simple has, simple for short, simultaneous policy is the short word. It's both a policy and a process. So first of all, a po as a policy, simultaneous implementation, that's why it's called the simultaneous policy. Secondly, as I said, it would have a multi-issue framework. So we're not talking about all global problems being solved on one day. What we're talking about is a series of multi-issue uh, uh, policy packages. 
So you might have in year one, simple one, in year three, simple two, uh, you, you know, and a, a series of packages. So of course you can also revise the earlier packages as well. Whoops. <clears throat> now, this is the important bit, voting pressure. When citizens join the simple campaign, which is free, free of charge, they sign up online, they vote, they, they, they tell their politicians that they will give strong voting preference at all future national elections to any politician that pledges to implement the simultaneous policy. And in that way, the more citizens are joining, we are creating a stronger and stronger voting block. And we are not voting for this or that party, we are voting for any party within reason that signs up to simple. And politicians are invited to sign a pledge. The pledge says, I, as a politician, will implement the simultaneous policy subject to the policies being agreed by all or sufficient nations and subject to all or sufficient nations agreeing to implement them at the same time. So it's, it's an agreement in principle, it's a pledge in principle at this stage. And because of the voting pressure, politicians who fail to sign risk losing to those that do. So for politicians, it's a win-win. If they sign on to Simpol, they don't have to implement it until all or sufficient nations are on board. So there's no risk. But if they fail to sign and their competitors signed, they could lose their seat. So Simpol as a process. What am I doing? Sorry. No. Yeah, OK. So it's a little bit like, what I described is a little bit like you having now two votes, not just one. When you sign on to Simpol, you get a global vote. So when you sign on, um, we will then send your email on to your member of parliament or members of parliament to say, there is another person in your area that wants you to sign the Simpol pledge and will be voting accordingly at the next election. Watch out. Yeah? <clears throat> and then on election day, you get your national vote just like everybody else. So you, it's like two for one. Yeah. So competition between politicians is turbocharged, yeah, like this. And it's a win-win for politicians, like I said. They don't have to implement it until all the sufficient nations are on board. Uh, <clears throat> it doesn't, there's no conflict with their party policy because this is something that will happen in the future, not, not tomorrow. Uh, and they, they can attract the voting bloc of the Simpol supporters in their country and constituency. And cancel, you know, you may say, many, the first thing people say to me, oh yes, John, well, politicians will sign anything, but then they'll cancel it after the election. But there's nothing to cancel, because until all the sufficient nations are on board, there's nothing for them to go back on. There is no, nothing for them to cancel. And in fact, if a politician did cancel, we would, of course, publish that on our website so that none of our supporters would ever be likely to vote for that politician again. So cancelling is... And the idea is that if we can get this rolling in, dem in, the, in the democracies first, in the, in the major democracies, and the, assuming that the UN continues to prove to be disappointing in terms of solving global problems, something like this could become the established way to solve these issues, particularly as they get more and more serious as time goes on. And at that time, we think the non-democratic countries will join this process. So that's, th there's also my book, if you want a fuller explanation. Um, that I, that I'm sure that will raise more questions than it, ans uh, than it answers. But um, maybe um, in one of the sessions later, if, if you're interested, I can answer any further, more detailed questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.